Holy smokers, folks. This ain't no dang jokers, okay? Uh, two videos to react to here today. This uh, beauty of a video here in front of us, which I know a lot of people have wanted me to react to. Now we are talking about 1929. Um, I, I want to say something real quick, okay? And we're also going to react to this video here, uh, which came out today. I actually haven't even watched this one yet. I just want to react to that one because I'm sure it's going to be good talking about mega cap stocks when they think they're going to come back and those sorts of things, okay? This is the most interesting time I've ever seen in the stock market. In a matter of about 11 or 12 months span, let's just call it a year, okay? In a matter of a year, the market went from ultra insane bullish to ultra insane bearish in one year. That's how quick it happens. That's how quick it happens. Don't ever for the rest of your life forget this moment we're going through right now, okay? Now, if you think the sentiment can't be completely different one year from now, you are sorely mistaken because we've seen it before. The sentiment goes so far negative and then so far positive and then so far negative and so far positive. And I think a lot of it's because of social media. I'll be completely honest. And I think, you know, everybody being so connected nowadays, I think that's why we get so on one side or the other. It's either the world's completely ending. It's 1929 that you're going to invest for the next 20 years and not get your money back. Right. Or it's like, oh my gosh, we're going to the moon. Every stock's kind of 10 X from here. Okay. It's, it seems like I think it's because the world's so connected. Text messages, I just got one, social media, all this stuff, um, obviously TV, you know, YouTube, everything, Twitter, all this stuff. I think that's the reason we go so far this way or so far this way now. And it almost cracks me up because I'm like, it, it, the market is neither there or there most of the time. It's just not, but we get so caught up into this that it, um, you know, next thing you know, we're talking about, you know, don't buy the dip, uh, wait a hundred years and you might make money. It's, it's, it's interesting. Hope you guys enjoy. This is always just needed to do that little rant before we get into this. Thank you for everybody that subscribed to the, the channel. I think we hit 14,000 flip and flap Jack and subscribers. So thank you for each and every one of you that's here. I appreciate y'all. And, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Mr. Positive for the long term, short term, you know, shaky. Let's call it that. Long term, love it. I'm always buying the dip. You know me. If you're looking to join us in the private stock group and get access to the Discord chat to speak with all of us and talk about with all of us about different stocks and things like that, and get access to our weekly investor report, get access to all my course curriculums, check out the pinned comment down there. All righty, let's get into it. Uh, Going, John. It looks like they are buy the dip, one of the most popular strategies of the past few years. And even since the last financial crisis has retained its popularity this year during, you know, this month long sell off that has now dragged the S&P 500 down more than 20 percent. Individual investors do seem to be hanging on. They do seem to be buying more when the S&P 500 declines than when it's rising, <gasps> though many are smart. They're getting smarter. Tested by this incredible downturn, and it's been painful to say the least. Well, it certainly has been. I mean, I think people got got accustomed to, or maybe spoiled by the idea that whenever the stock market came went down temporarily, it was pretty soon going to over the last decade. It was pretty soon going to snap back and then go higher than it was. Then maybe come down. Then it was going to go higher than it was. That works until it doesn't. And right now, it doesn't seem to be working because the steps are not going higher. The steps seem to be going lower. Yeah, and let me explain the reason. And let me pull up a little trading view here and show you guys exactly what we're looking at. Okay, so if we pull up the S&P 500 and um, let's, let's back it up over the last, I don't know, few years here. Let's take it back five years and then I want to back it up even more than that, essentially. Okay, so... You know, what you had happen, uh, you know, over time here, essentially, right? And after after we got through the, the crash, then you had the double dip recession fear, market went down for, you know, a few months there, started coming back. We had the worries of the summer of 2015. I got torn up with that and I was doing a lot of trading, earnings trades. I was doing a lot of just silly stuff. I got shredded in that market in the kind of summertime of, of 2015 or so. But then the market came back strong again. Then we had the uh, 2018 
major uh, dip there. Let's just call it that. That was a little uh, miniature bear rally. That was a rough October through December was nasty, man. And then uh, January market bottom down. We started coming up again. And then we had obviously the Rona crash, which was down in a straight line, the fastest stock market crash ever, then up in an insane rally. And so, yeah, I mean, you got confirmation that just things are going to fall really quick and then bounce right back. What's different this time is things been falling for a while, okay? You know, when you, when you think about that, that's why we're in a proper stock market crash right now, what I call a proper stock market crash that started, you know, all the way back in February 2021 when those stocks had all peaked, the, the more speculative ones, the SPAC names, IPO names, the big growth names, or the, just the, you know, crazy stocks, whatever you want to call them, okay? When those ones peaked, started going down, right? And then the entire market and the rest of the stock started going down in November, 2021. And it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And like NASDAQ just hit a fresh low here today. SP 500 hit a fresh low today. Dow, I believe hit a fresh low today and Russell hit a fresh low today. So there you are in a moment in time. And every single stock has just gotten more and more obliterated that it's like, dude, like when do we go up again? And, um, you know, when you're in a proper crash, like it, it, you know, it lasts anywhere from one year to three years in a proper crash, right? You know, this is uh, definitely an accelerated crash, but it's not, you know, straight down a straight line. We've had some little rallies here and there. So, you know, even look at the great financial crisis. That was like an 18 month crash roughly. So that's just what you have to expect. That's what you have to expect in this situation. Okay. Broke last week through those June lows. That's right. You know, it's been the worst year for buying the stock market dip since 1931, the second worst year on record. And look, wow, second worst year for buying the dip on record. I'm guessing they, I don't know how they calculate that. If anybody has any idea how they would even calculate that, let me know in the comments section. That's a high level subject. I'll be, in, I'm going to see who's really intelligent there because you got to figure that one out. Um, that's interesting. Worst year to buy the dip since 1931. Wow few years, it kind of just seemed like stocks would keep going up and up and up. And so many people just felt really rich, right? <laughs> because I don't know if that's how they uh, calculated that or not, or if this is just a random chart. But buy on those dips, then the stock market shot up immediately. And one individual investor I spoke with said, look, I, I got greedy. I thought it would be so easy to turn my brokerage account into a 100K brokerage account. I thought so I'd be careful. able to pay for my daughter's college, college education uh, through the stock market, shielding them from loans, because it just seems so easy for a few years. And that has not been the environment at all. And I think just zooming out, this shows you how much the market has changed this year with higher bond yields and tumbling stock prices. Yep. You know, I, I just heard from uh, from a source this weekend, the same thing, if looking at these historic inflows of equities, and especially these retail investors, non-professionals going in and buying the dips, but conventional wisdom, as Tyler pointed out, is what they're going by. They watch CNBC all day. This has been the message that they're hearing. Are you starting to see cracks in the theories that there might be uh, some room for some nervousness over the stock market and where it's heading? There's definitely a lot of nervousness, nervousness out there, especially among the individual investors I spoke with. And many realized, look, these trades that I piled into for, for example, day trading, um, buying the ARK Innovation ETF, yeah. a lot of those trades that worked the past two years are no longer working. So even though we are seeing individual individual investors, you know, buy the retail trading of U.S. securities and billions of dollars, um, obviously went wild in Rona and. Yeah, we're approaching back down to normalish levels. I mean, with all that influx, you would assume we got like a new baseline or we should have a new baseline. To some degree this year, that doesn't mean they're not anxious about it. That doesn't mean there hasn't been other shifts in behavior. For example, intraday trading among ind individual investors recently wow. hit the lowest level since January 2020, before the onset of the pandemic that drew millions of new investors into markets. We just showed the, the inflows into the uh, people piling into the arc, uh, people pile net inflows into equity funds are actually up for much of the of the rising times uh, in the market. The inflows were actually negative. They weren't they weren't inflows. They were. And I wish Ron Asano were here. Maybe, you know, it, uh, Gunjan as well. But remember, uh, I 
I happily only remember a very little part of this. Between 1929, <laughs> when, 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 when the market cracked in 1929, it did not get above its pre-crash uh, high for something like 20 years, until 1954 or something like that was the year I was born. So I'm telling you, these downturns can last a long, long time, and it is not necessarily a given that the market is going to go back and take out uh, the all-time high that we set at the first of this year. Just it saying. seems downright impossible to say right now and to even predict right now, but I think that is one big shift this year, right? Where suddenly investors have somewhere else to place their cash. Correct, Take a correct. look at the two-year treasury yield, the 10-year treasury yield, right? Like ultra-safe government bonds look attractive. For the first time in years, real yields are edging higher. So, you know, it really puts a dent in that TINA trade that carried markets the past few years. So and no one knows how long this sell-off is going to last. But one thing is for sure, it's incredibly different from other sell-offs that we've Yeah, okay. So, whew, you know, the, the, I think the biggest thing you can take away from that is the moment in time we're in in the market, right? Now we're, now we're saying, remember back in 1929, took over 20 years to get back to where we used to be. That's the stage of the market now. And I have not seen, I've never seen it this bearish. I'll just be honest with you. Even when... I first got in the market at late 08, 09. That was so long ago, it's, it's hard for me to even remember kind of what the commentary was back then. But it was super negative, I remember that. They were talking about, you know, things were going to be horrible for a long, long time, right? And, um, you know, shortly, right, like pretty much right after I got started getting in the market, the market started to bounce. And obviously, we, the rest is history. You, you, can, you can play that out, Okay. So uh, it shows us where we're at in, in this sort of market right now. Uh, the pessimism is overwhelming. The bearishness is overwhelming. There's nothing off the table right now. They, you know, they'll throw WW3 at you. They'll throw, it's going to be 1929. They'll throw a great financial crisis at you. It, you know, there's, there's no stopping whatever will be thrown at you in this sort of market. It, it will stay like this until, until the market reverses. Nothing to do with numbers, nothing to do with earnings, nothing to do with people's opinions changing. The only thing that will change people's opinions is when the market starts going up and doesn't just do it for like a week or two, but like a month, next month, next month, next month. That's when, that's the moment when people all of a sudden back off this, it's the end of the world, we're down forever and ever, and uh, those sorts of things. And tell them, the, mar the market dictates these whole feelings that people sometimes have hidden inside them. 1929, the WW3, all this stuff. All these feelings are usually hidden, hidden inside people. But when the market's going up and up and up and everything looks good, people back off those feelings. They, they, don't, they don't want to talk about those feelings or they're scared to talk about those feelings. But when things get shaky, when they get bad, that's when all this emotion comes out and talking about, you know, it's the end of the world. It's what plays out, okay? And uh, last, time, last time we've seen it this bad, honestly, is honestly 08, 09. And uh, I don't even remember it being this bearish. But then again, I wasn't as in the market back then. You know, I was just kind of getting in and trying to figure this stuff out. So maybe if I was more in it, I would have seen this level of bearishness. But honestly, this feels more bearish, more negative than uh, even back then, which is crazy to even think about because they're not even comparable, to be honest. They're just not. You know, what, what was going on? In the, people don't even realize that changed everything in the United States forever. That, that put us into a system where the government's going to back everything. And if things get too ugly, they're going to step in and do whatever they want to. And going into the great financial crisis, it was debated if we should even step in. That's the thing people don't understand, like, like you know, who haven't, like, studied the history around that, is back then, a lot of folks were very against. They thought that was, like, socialistic, that we come start bailing out banks and bail out everything. We do TARP and all that stuff, right? And uh, now that's just a norm. The government's going to do whatever it has to do. The government has no reason to step in right now, though. That's the, that's the thing. The Fed has no reason to step in right now. The government has no reason to step in right now. Because Shopify stock's down 80% year-to-date and Meta stock's down 60% year-to-date, they don't care. It's when unemployment starts rising. It's when the economy gets worse. It's when real estate gets worse. That's when the government starts to pay attention and be like, okay, we gotta, we got to start doing some stuff. Right now, the, the stock market's just up to its own. And the scariest thing with the stock market right now is it has nothing to go off of other than fear breeding fear right now. Once earnings come out, 
Then, and we get into the big earnings season in, in mid to late October, then the, the stock market will start moving based upon earnings. But for right now, we have hardly any earnings coming out, so the market can go wherever it wants to go right now. And obviously, when you have this overall just such pessimistic sentiment out there, I mean, where's the market going in that sort of environment, right? As a long-term investor, you get some incredible buying opportunities, but, you know, that is what it is. But then again, 1929, so we won't get our money back for 20 years. All right. Brief relief rally yesterday, but it was based on what was a desperation move in the UK to uh, forestall really a, a cataclysmic event, which is a major unwind of the financial system there. So... Big cap tech, if you take a look, let's put Apple aside now because I know we'll talk about it later. But you've got these companies for the first time. These are major growth companies making major moves in layoffs, cutting back projects. We saw that Google shut down Kitty Hawk uh, last week. Uh, that was kind of surprising because that's what they do. They look to the future. They invest. So while they're cutting heads and while they're looking at slowing growth rates, and this has nothing to do with regulation. That comes on and gets even worse. These stocks are no longer cheap. So like every other one, you're well, going to cheaper. see. They're they getting are, cheaper. Well, There's well, Alphabet, Microsoft, NVIDIA, new 52-week lows today. The XLK Semi's new 52-week low today. Uh, these stocks in one month, Apple down 11%, Amazon down 12, Alphabet 11.5, Microsoft down 11, Meta 14, NVIDIA 23. But here's why no... There's no way possible, if you know anything about valuing stocks, there's no way possible you can't say at least Meta and Google are cheap. Apple's a debate. Microsoft's a debate. I think Amazon's a debate. But there's no way... You possible you can look at Meta and Google and not say those stocks are cheap, in my personal opinion, if we're just looking at big tech, right? NVIDIA AMD on a long-term basis also. Short-term basis, I think their numbers could get maybe potentially worse for at least the next one to two quarters. But even on a long-term basis, those ones look like pretty good pricing here, okay? But there's no debate about Google and, and Meta, in my personal opinion. You know, Amazon, hey, it's different. It, it, you know, it depends on how long of a view you got on an Amazon, right? Apple trades rich compared to its historical norm. Same thing with, with well, Microsoft's kind of in where it usually does. And cheaper because we haven't seen the reset in earnings. And I'm still looking at a target of $200 in S&P earnings, and you're not going to get to $200 without having these big cap tech stocks come down as well. So until the market comes to grips with that, I question as to whether these stocks are cheap enough. Okay, so let's leave it there. Kerry, um, to that point, right, do, do these stocks have much further to go? Uh, they're the most important if you look at the weighting of the, of the market. They matter more than almost anything else for obvious reasons. Well, they still have large market caps. And to the you know, extent that Steve is worried about earnings... Earnings are coming across the board down. We, we know that's going to happen. But even with lower earnings, if you look at what's happened with a stock like Meta, which is down 65 plus percent uh, over the last 12 months, those lowered numbers are, are certainly at the point where the stock is trading at either 12 and a half times next year's earnings or 15 and a half or 16 times. So even with much lower numbers, you've got a multiple that is 30% below what most consumer. Thank you. Thank you. Someone with a brain. Thank you. Staples are selling at. And I'm not suggesting that Meta doesn't have any problems or that the advertising market that Meta and Google are a a large part of isn't problematic, a problematic, but Google sells for 16 times earnings. Maybe it's 18 times earnings, but that is so much lower than where it was. And these companies are still growing faster than the economy, growing faster than almost all the consumer stocks out there and most industrials. And so you look. Hey, I like her, man. They need her on CNBC more often. This is the first time I've ever in my life seen this lady. They need her more often. That's all I got to say. Thumbs up for her. For bargains where you can find them. And these stocks have to be uh, attractive to some value buyers. And, and the growth of people who don't own them should be buying them now because their growth rates, while down over the next year, are still going to be faster than, than the uh, GDP well, and the S&P is going to grow. You look at the forward PE of Apple. Josh, you made the point yesterday in overtime. Even as a shareholder who loves this company, that it's you can make the argument that Apple is too expensive here. Yeah. 
Well, you can't you cannot make the argument that Apple is cheap. So as as I as I discussed yesterday on any metric, you want to uh, look at this stock and and pick the top six or seven valuation metrics. It's not cheap. The bigger question is, um, so so what is the punishment for that? Well, we see this is a stock that has outperformed the market for the last nine months year to date. And now it's underperforming. It's worse today than most of its brethren. And, uh, you know, it's just I guess to me, it's just not that surprising that you would see a stock like this have to eventually catch down. So today you have Apple down four percent, Microsoft only down two percent. Meta only down 2%. Those stocks have already come in a lot. So mm -hmm. it makes sense to me that now it's Apple's turn. We've seen this repeatedly, by the way, uh, in, in the last you know 10 years in market corrections. Apple has been very stubborn. It very rarely is at the vanguard of a move lower in the market. But eventually, they get to it. So I think that's what you're seeing right now. I don't think anybody should be terribly surprised by it. No, I mean, the downgrade today from Bank... And I remember in the 2018 fall, um, I remember Apple getting shredded in that, in that whole situation. I mean, all the stocks got shredded in December 2018, but I remember uh, Apple specifically got hammered hard. America uh, was the catalyst for, uh, I think, today's move. Downgraded to neutral. That's from buy. Price target to 160 from 185. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with expected slowdown, Brenda, in consumer spending. And that Apple's going to take a hit as a result of that. You already had the report yesterday questioning whether, you know, they were going to increase production of the new iPhone, suggesting they were not. So now you've got two days in a row of negative uh, reports coming out about Apple. Right. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, Apple's a consumer products company, but it's also a global consumer products company. So that, you know, when you think about where does their revenue come from? Well, about 60 percent comes from overseas. So even if we can all get comfortable with the U.S. consumer, given the strong, strong job market savings, et cetera, I think we have to look to what might. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know why they just ended that like that. That was a little weird. But anyways, I thought she was bringing out actually a really good point there. Um, and if Europe's really weak and much weaker than the United States, that could obviously hurt um, Apple's numbers. I just wanted to show you guys kind of how nasty it got because I don't know how many people um, you know, that are watching this were in the market back then. Shout out if you were in the market in 2018. Let me know in the comment section. And when I say in the market, I mean like you were buying stocks. But, um, you know, this probably, so right there, December 31st, 2018, $37 on a split adjusted basis. And if you go back to August um, of that year, right, August 27th, you know, this was a $56 stock. That's a massive, massive move down there. I mean, what is that, like 35, 40% roughly, somewhere in there, 34%. Uh, Jeez, yeah. So, in in as in a matter of months, so it's not all the realm of possibility for that to happen to a stock like Apple. But I think the important thing to remember when it comes to Apple is, you know, it kind of it's got a different shareholder base now than it did back then. It definitely does. You know, it's got the Berkshire backing now, obviously, and, and got a lot more of those. Just we're holding this for the next, you know, twenty years type folks that they're not interested in selling, and if anything, they're interested in acquiring more shares. And also the services business is so respected nowadays and it's such a recurring revenue stream for the company that it honestly com it should command a, a forward P over 20. It's debated if it should command a 22, a 24, a 26, a 28. I think that's up for debate, but I think Apple is a company that deserves a forward P of 20 or more just because it's got that recurring revenue stream now. Never mind their hardware business is honestly kind of like a miniature recurring revenue stream because it's like, dude, if my iPhone breaks i'm going to buy another iphone right if my ipad breaks or my computer breaks like i'm gonna go buy another one right so but that's not as perfect of a recurring revenue stream as obviously their cloud products are apple music all those services that people are signed up for spending on the app store and uh, you know apple taking its cut each time from all those different things obviously so um Anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoy this as always. I think the biggest takeaway from video like this is just understand as long as the market keeps dropping, however that long that is, whether that's, you know, a couple more weeks here or a few more months, just remember, uh, you know, the, the, the negativity is going to be 
unbearable, nearly unbearable um, around, they're going to throw everything at it. Great financial crisis, 1929, anything. Um, And until the market reverses for a few months, that's when people start to step back a little bit. That's when the more bullish people and optimistic people start to step in. Their voices are heard more and uh, everything starts to switch there. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this as always. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you're looking to be around positive people, join us in the private stock group inside the Discord chat. And uh, we got a lot of Palantir share shareholders in there, Tesla shareholders, Meta, a lot of people buying the dip in that one and, and obviously many other stocks. So if you're looking to join us in there, check out the pinned comment down there. Much love and have a great day.